Hi, I'm Simon. Today we're going to look at a very useful IC, the 4511 BCD to 7 segment decoder. First we're going to take a look at the spec, then we're going to look at a test circuit, and then we're going to build it on a breadboard and try it out. Okay, let's get started. Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about the 4511 BCD to 7 segment latching decoder and driver. Uh, there are many chips that you can use to drive a 7 segment display. This is one of my favorite ones. It's easy to use, it's very straightforward. <clears throat> if we take a look at the functional diagram on the right hand side here, you can see there are pins A, B, C, and D. These are equivalent to the 1, 2, 4, and 8 in binary. There's a strobe pin and notice that it's a not strobe so it's activated by a low. We'll talk about that in a little while. There's a lamp test pin also activated by a low and a blanking pin which is activated by a low. And we can use the lamp test and the blanking pin uh, as we wish or we can tie them high if we only have one display. One of the uses for the blanking pin is to put in a modulated signal so that you can vary the intensity. Over here we have the seven segment outputs, the A, A through G to the seven segments uh, from the driver part of the, the chip. Continuing to look at the IC spec, we see here the actual pin layout, 1 through 16. We see the lamp test blanking and strobe pin or latch enable pin with a bar above them. This means a not function, so they are active low. Notice here under the applications that it says driving common cathode LED displays. What this means is that if we think of the display as containing seven separate LEDs, one for each segment. That the cathode of each one of those LEDs is tied together internally in the display. Each anode is connected to the driver pin, so the driver pin would go high to turn on the segment, and the cathodes, all common, tied together, would be tied to ground. There is also a, a common anode type display, in this display, the, uh, all of the anodes are connected to your plus. All the cathodes go to the driver pins, and to turn on the display, the driver pin is pulled low. Here we're going to take a look at the truth table for the IC. You see the different pin functions along the top here. So you can see that uh, when we pull the lamp test pin low, and uh, doesn't care, X, if you look down here, X means doesn't care. Doesn't care what the latch enable or the blanking pin state is. It will, and it doesn't care what's on the inputs, it will pull all of the display driver pins high. That means it'll feed a high to all of the seven segments, and it'll display an eight, which is every segment lit up. With the blanking pin, if we pull the blanking pin low, and we have a high on the latch, oh, sorry, on the lamp test pin. Again, not caring about the latch pin, not caring about the inputs. It will put zeros on all the all the seven segment pins, and we'll have a blank on the display. Then the various combinations of BCD input on the A through D or one through eight pins here will produce the zero through nine display. In the, in the case of this driver chip, this is all it can do. It, if you try to feed it a, another code on the A through D pins, it just displays a blank. It, doesn't, it won't recognize them and it blanks it. So some drivers you can actually use these to put other things on the, onto the uh, display. For example, you could put an H on the display by lighting up all the segments except for the, the top and the bottom segment, for example. Okay, now let's talk about the latch enable pin. So you see here I've also put in the, uh, the, the numbers 1 through 8, which each pin represents. Um, 
when the latch enable is is low it will transfer whatever is on whatever data is on the, the a through d pins or the input pins onto the display so while this is low while this latch enable is low if you change the numbers on these data pins the the display will change instantly if you pull it high and you see here we have only one instance shown of it high the it doesn't care what's on the inputs anymore it does star and star means depends on bcd code previously applied when latch enable equals zero so what that means is that whatever was last on those data pins right before this pin was pulled high that's what stays on the display until you pull this low again okay folks let's take a look at a circuit to test this ic out here you can see the 4511 ic the seven segment representation some series resistors just to limit the current about 220 ohms will give us a nice bright display over here you see that the lamp test and blanking pin are pulled high so this will essentially disable them they're not pins that we're going to use very much for this demonstration but we can enable them by pulling them low with these switches here you see for the latch enable strobe pin the opposite is true we pull the pin low to enable it and we only disable it if we turn on this switch here connecting the pin to plus five which will essentially freeze the display you can also see that pins A through D are connected to these switches here which represent the 1, 2, 4 and 8 in binary so if we switch this on it'll connect the pin to plus 5, it'll pull the, the pin high and again you see that all the pins are, are normally pulled low to ground by a resistor here and whenever you're dealing with this kind of circuitry it's always good practice with a pin to pull it to the state you want it to be at most of the time don't leave pins floating okay now we're going to build the circuit and demonstrate the actual function while watching the breadboard build think about this we could connect three or four of these chips to the same input pins the ABCD pins on a microprocessor and then just control which display is active using the latch pin okay our circuit is built let's test it out you can see right now we're displaying a three on this, on the display um, and you can see that that makes sense because the binary one and two pins are tied to high uh, this is the binary four and this is the eight i'm not following these numbers so let's switch <clears throat> to another pin we're going to do the one two and four so we should have a seven on the display and sure enough we do have a 7 on the display. Let's try turning off a couple of pins here. So we should just, if we just have the number 1 pin on, we should just have a 1 on the display, and we do. And let's just for fun turn on the 8, so we should have a 9 on the display, and we do. So our display is working. Let's try a couple of other things here. So let's turn on the lamp test pin number five and it lights up all the segments as it's supposed to. So we'll turn that off. It's a little bit tricky with the <coughs> dip switch. Now let's try the, um, oh, I turned off the wrong switch there. Let's just turn that one back on and turn the lamp test off. Now let's try the blanking switch. So if I turn this on and it blanks the display, so that's working. Now let's try the latch enable. So right now things are enabled. As I change the data line, the data inputs, the display changes. When I <coughs> pull this pin high, it should freeze the display on nine. So let's try changing some inputs. We'll change everything to zero. And sure enough, the display is frozen. And now you see when I when I remove that latch, I'm just about to do, the display should go to zero because all our data pins are at zero. And it does. 
and just uh, to check we'll turn on the 2 we should get a 2 on the display and we do so there you go there's the 4511 in action thanks for watching the video now let's go play with Nala come on don't eat the grass come on ready okay Nala come on come on ready ready go get it girl go get it Good girl. Good girl. Bring it to dad. Bring it to dad. Good.